Chuck Wagon MTG is sponsored by BC Comics and Games. Hey everyone, welcome to another great deck tech video here on Chuck Wagon MTG. Today, for your enjoyment, we present Don't Hex Me Bro, a black green standard version of Boggles. In a meta that's healthy for control, this deck puts control back in your hands with a battlefield that's impervious to most removal and strips away the few options your opponents have left. Let's take a look at the creatures that make up our Hexproof deck. We have four copies of Lanoir Elves, a 1-1 elf for one green mana that you can tap to add one green mana to your mana pool. These guys are here simply to help us get everything else out. Next, we have four copies of Knight of Malice, a 2-2 human knight for one generic and one black mana that has first strike and hexproof from white. It also gets plus one plus oh as long as any player controls a white permanent. Now, this isn't necessarily completely hexproof, but with white being a decent majority of the removal right now, it's pretty darn close. Plus a 2-2 for two that has first strike is good in its own rights. And then we have three copies of Jade Guardian, a 2-2 Merfolk for three generic and one green mana that has hexproof, and when it enters the battlefield, you get to put a plus one plus one counter on target Merfolk you control. Now, we're not running any other Merfolk in this deck, so we're either going to be putting that counter on another Jade Guardian we happen to have out, but most likely it's just going to come into the battlefield as a 3-3 Merfolk with hexproof. And then we have four copies of Vine Mare, a 5-3 elemental horse for two generic and two green mana that has hexproof and it can't be blocked by black creatures. Now this is hexproof above and beyond because not only is it hexproof, but it can't be blocked by black creatures and zombies are kind of a thing right now. And lastly, we have three copies of our beater, the Carnage Tyrant. A 7-6 dinosaur for four generic and two green mana that can't be countered, it has trample, and it has hexproof. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the non-creature spells we have in our deck. We have two copies of Doomfall, a sorcery for two generic and one black mana that gives us two options. The first is target opponent exiles a creature they control, or the second one, and the one we're probably going to use the most, target opponent reveals their hand and we get to choose a non-land card from it and exile it. This is most likely going to be used for any type of board wipe as that's what's probably going to impact us the most. Next we have four copies of Broken Bond, a sorcery for one generic and one green mana that destroys target artifact or enchantment and then we get to put a land card from our hand onto the battlefield. So not only is this perfect for those pesky ballistas or Beaumont couriers or scroungers that happen to be popular right now, but we also get to have a land go from our hand to the battlefield, thus getting our larger creatures out a little bit quicker. Then we have four copies of Adventurous Impulse, a sorcery for one green mana. Look at the top three cards of your library. You get to reveal a creature or land card from among them, and then put them into your hand, and the rest go on the bottom of your library in any order. This is just to help us dig through our deck to find what we need a little bit quicker. Now, what would a black deck be without some kind of removal? So we have two copies of Vraska's Contempt, an instant for two generic and two black mana that exiles target creature or planeswalker, and you gain two life. Then we have three copies of Fatal Push, an instant for one black mana that destroys target creature if its converted mana cost is two or less. And then it has a revolt trigger that if a permanent you controlled left the battlefield this turn, you can destroy target creature that has converted mana cost of four or less instead. And then we have three copies of The Eldest Reborn, an enchantment saga for four generic and one black mana. Upon the first trigger, each opponent sacrifices a creature or a planeswalker. On the second trigger, each opponent discards a card. And then on the third trigger, put target creature or planeswalker card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under our control. This works great with Doomfall. And lastly, we have our Toolbox Planeswalker. We have one copy of Vivian Reed, who enters the battlefield with five loyalty counters and costs three generic and two green mana. 
She has a plus one ability of look at the top four cards of our library, and we can reveal a creature or land card from among them and put them into our hand, and the rest go on the bottom in a random order. She has a negative three ability of destroy target artifact, enchantment, or creature with flying, and then she has an ultimate of negative eight. You get an emblem with creatures we control, get plus two, plus two, vigilance, trample, and indestructible. For the most part, we're just going to be using her for her top and second ability, both to sort through our deck for the cards we're looking for, or to destroy something that's really hampering our game. Our land base consists of four copies of Blooming Marsh that can be tapped for either a black or a green mana, and it enters the battlefield tapped unless we control two or fewer lands. And then we have four copies of Woodland Cemetery, which can also be tapped for a black or a green mana, and then it enters the battlefield tapped unless we control a swamp or a forest. And then we have two copies of Detection Tower, a land that can be tapped to add a colorless mana to our mana pool, or we can pay one generic, tap it, and then until end of turn, our opponents and a creature's our opponents control with hexproof can be targeted by spells and abilities we control as though they didn't have hexproof. Basically, we're the only ones that we want to have hexproof. We also have two copies of Scavenger Grounds, a land desert that can be tapped to add a colorless man to our mana pool, or we can pay two generic, tap it, and sacrifice a desert, exile all cards from all graveyards. This is mainly for those zombie decks or the Scarab God decks that love diving for dead stuff. And then, as for basic lands, we've got forests and swamps. Six forests and five swamps, to be precise. Our sideboard consists of two copies of Divest, a sorcery for one black mana. Target player reveals their hand, and you can choose an artifact or creature card from it, and then they discard it. This is for any deck that happens to outpace us in the early game, and we need to get the creatures out of their hands before they hit the battlefield. And then we have four copies of Duress, a sorcery for one black mana. Target opponent reveals their hand, and you choose a non-creature, non-land card from it, and then they discard it. This is for those decks that happen to be kind of more controlling or have more board wipes than just the Doomfalls can deal with. We then have two copies of Murder, an instant for one generic and two black mana that destroys target creature. Essentially, this is for those decks that have creatures that are too big to target with Fatal Push. And then we have one copy of Gaia's Blessing, a sorcery for one generic and one green mana. Target player shuffles up to three target cards from their graveyard into their library, and then draw a card. When Gaia's Blessing is put into your graveyard from the library, shuffle your graveyard into your library. Now, this is on um, the off chance that we happen to run into a mill deck. Uh, essentially, you do not want to start the game with this in your hand. You want it in your library. That way, when they mill it, it shuffles your library back in and just really slows down their entire mill plan. Next, we have four copies of Plummet, an instant for one generic and one green mana, destroy target creature with flying. This is probably going to be one of the more used cards in the sideboard, simply because of the amount of dragons and angels we have flying around in the meta right now. And lastly, we have two copies of Prowling Serpapard, a 4-3 Cat Snake for one generic and two green mana. It cannot be countered in creature spells you control can't be countered as well. This is just for going up against those control matches where you can't seem to get anything out onto the battlefield before the Hexproof can actually take effect. Well, that about wraps up our deck tech for Don't Hex Me Bro, a standard black-green Hexproof deck that is actually relatively easy to pilot. Essentially, we're just putting out creatures that cannot be targeted by removal, and they hold off until we can get our big guys out on the board and swing in for the win. And at the price of just over 167 bucks uh, on paper or $70 online, you can actually call this uh, the high end of a budget deck, as sad as that is. Um, we're not going to label it as a budget deck, but still the price uh, definitely puts it in the range of affordable, and not to mention it's exceptionally fun to play. 
And I'd like to thank everyone for watching today. Greatly appreciated. If you like what you saw here, do us a huge favor. Click that like button. Hit subscribe. Be sure to hit that bell notification button so you can tell when we have new episodes coming out. And be sure to share this with your friends, your family, your loved ones, and your pets. Everyone could use a little more magic in their lives. Once again, thank you very much for watching. And as always, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Twitch, Chuckwagon. MTG. Now, if you do me one last favor and check out this brief message about our sponsor. Chuckwagon MTG is sponsored by BC Comics and Games, now at one mega location to fill all of your gaming and comic needs. They have Magic the Gathering events every night of the week, as well as Warhammer, Pathfinder, Dungeons and Dragons Adventures League, Final Fantasy TCG, Pokemon, and Star Wars X-Wing events all throughout the week. They also have close to 100,000 comics on site. This is why I have personally made BC Comics and Games my home gaming store. Don't take me, bro!